इट्स द गेम बिटवीन यॉर्ड एन वैन फॉरेस्ट एंड आई एम उराज आई एम फ्रॉम कजकस्तान वॉट अ पोजिशन वी हैव ऑन द बोर्ड द ब्लैक बिशप इज ऑन जी वन द नाइट ऑन एफ सिक्स इज पिंड द किंग इज ऑन एफ एट वॉट इज हैपनिंग हियर लेट्स जस्ट बैकअप फॉर अ मोमेंट एंड ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ वी रीच यर सो यॉर्ड एन प्लेइंग विद द वाइट पीसेस ओपन द गेम विथ वन ई फोर his opponent responded with c6 the karo khan and we had the fantasy variation with f3 now the main move here has been e6 but of late players have been starting to experiment with the move queen b6 and is quickly becoming a very important move in this position knight to c3 and now black went for the main move which is d takes e4 white generally captures back with the pawn or knight but jordan said i'm going to play bishop c4 now this is not a new move but it is relatively lesser played the a safe way for black to play here is knight to f6 and uh, this in this way i think black is doing pretty okay out of the opening but what did urazayev do he played the move e5 and this has been played before by some players like Pantsulaya, Mekedashvili, Batsyashvili and so on. Jordan took the pawn and now in came bishop c5. Urazayev has a simple idea. He says either I'll give you a check or I'll take your knight on g1. These are his plans. If you play your knight to e2 here, then after e takes f3, your structure is ruined pretty badly. So that's the reason why Jordan sacrificed a piece with knight takes e4. And he said to Razev, look, I've controlled the f2 square now. So you must take the piece. He took on g1. And now in came a check. King went to f8. And here there is a big issue. You can't take the bishop because there is a mate on f2. So that's the reason why. Jordan played the move queen d2. Very interesting decision. He could have also played queen e2, but he realized that after d2, the queen has opportunities to go to f4. So he went here, and when Urazayev played his bishop to e6 to protect his bishop and also the pawn on f7, Jordan took, pawn takes, and gave a check on f4. Now, already you can see the advantage of queen d2. Now the king cannot really move if you go to e7 then after queen f7 check king d8 queen e8 check king c7 and queen c8 the game is over it's checkmate that's the reason why he played his knight to f6 blocking the check saying that i won a piece i'm giving it back to you and now jordan played this important move knight e4 protecting against f2 check and also attacking the knight here Now let's have a look at how the game continued from this point onwards. Urazayev is thinking for his move here. He goes knight to d7 and Jordan simply chops off the knight on f6. He takes it back. He tells Jordan that if you were to take on e4 uh, on f6, notice that the queen can move in. So Jordan goes for a check on d6. The time is 8 minutes for Urazayev. and 6 minutes for jordan if the king goes to g8 then e6 falls with a check but that should be relatively better also if the king goes to e8 then there is knight takes f6 check uh, and followed by queen takes e6 that can get pretty dangerous here so that's the reason why urazayev is thinking for his move what to do and he plays his king to f7 this is a mistake and jordan instantly goes check he wants to place king to g6 but steps back and then plays it jordan instantly goes back queen d3 check now the king has to come to h5 because if it went to h6 there would have been a deadly discovered check from the bishop but the king is out really far from its camp and it is on h5 jordan moves his knight back very interesting move with this he defends f2 attacks g1 also frees up some kind of an attack on the king on h5 what should be done next because if you save the bishop he goes queen b4 check and he's saying that if you were to play c3 
I will move here with the check and you can't play g3 because your knight is hanging. Well, that seems like the plan. Also, you must notice here that after knight h3, you can't really go with bishop back because there was g4 check. So he goes king to f1. Now, Jordan moves his king away and he tells black that I'm taking your bishop. Then I'll be a piece up. But Urazev comes and attacks the queen on d3. Now, you have to move the queen here. That seems like an important thing to do. You can see Jordan just very focused. He knows he has a chance to create a brilliancy here, a great game that can be played. And so he's putting all his energy in to figure out what is the best move in the, in the given position. One very interesting idea is to block it up with c4. Look at this variation. Rook takes d3 and now knight to f4 check. But Jordan goes g4 and this is a very nice move. His point is that if you take here, take here, and then take here, queen takes g4, then I have knight f4 check anyway, and the king is very, very exposed. So that's the reason why taking on g4 does not seem like an idea. But if you don't take there, then what do you do? Oh, you have a square on h4. And from there, the king can't be disturbed so easily. There are no checks. Yes, you can go bishop g5 check, but then your h3 knight is hanging. So king h4 definitely seems like an idea for Urazaev, but he is considering chopping this off. Also, when you take, you have to consider knight f4 check because after king h4, queen e2, the king is very, very precariously positioned and this is hanging and it can become very difficult so taking on g4 might not be the best and there you can see urazaev coming in with king h4 knight is hanging queen is hanging so there is definitely some thought that jordan has to put in uh, he really doesn't want to lose this knight because then there could be problems but also at the same time how do you use your queen to defend this knight it's not so easy it's not so easy. Four minutes left for Jordan, and he has to figure out in such complex positions, engines play really well. But for humans, it's not so simple. Queen e2 definitely seems like an idea moving here because after king takes h3, there is a check, king h4, and queen g3 checkmate. So queen e2 might be the very uh, simple solution to this problem or you can see say the less attractive one but Jordan goes for king g2 and his point is if you take rook takes d3 bishop g5 is such a pretty checkmate what a beautiful checkmate this is and with the queen sacrifice he's played his king here he's a true artist queen c5 stopping bishop g5 because then there is queen takes g5 and now I guess you want to move your queen away uh, because it is hanging. So again, queen e2, you can also offer a queen, maybe here queen c4 because if you take there is bishop g5 mate once again. So that would look pretty. Bishop to f4, what a move again by Jordan. And his point is that if you take here on uh, d3, then rook bishop g3 is once again checkmate because the g5 square is controlled by the knight so once again offering the queen bishop f4 this is so beautiful the king in just 19 moves was lured to h4 and now it is far away from its enemy camp and it is being hounded by the white pieces Urazev down to his last minute. He knows that the game is almost done and dusted here. But he wants to find something. Well, there could be some ideas. But the white king is just so safe. There's no way to reach it. Absolutely. 30, 30 seconds now for Urazaev. And maybe the only solution now looks like to take this pawn on g4 with the knight. But once you do that, 
maybe you have to factor in this check king h5 oh my god he's down to 15 seconds oh he takes it he takes on g4 he takes the pawn jordan moves bishop g3 check first very logical king has to come to h5 only move and now uh, f takes g4 also falls with the check so you are already a piece down king h6 played g1 bishop is hanging uh, in comes g5 check and the point is if you come king takes here then there is queen e2 check perhaps or there could be some other way he goes king h5 queen e2 check looks strong but he goes knight f4 that's very pretty because now after king g5 there's 96 check with a fork here the rook would also fall and urazayev resigns what a beautiful king hunt this was and very nicely played by the ever so creative and talented chess player Jordan Van Forest. Life is full of exciting events, but it is our first impressions that we remember best. Your first diploma, your first job in a big company, Unforgettable emotions from the first date, the first expensive things you bought when you got your first paycheck, and your first investments with Freedom Broker. Freedom Broker. Look at your favorite brands from a new perspective.